Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of the Marconi 55.9 radio restoration. I'm first of all going to start the video off by simply saying that I know I said last time that we would try and get the ultra electric uh, T41 finished before we got another one of these videos up, however that really isn't going to happen anytime soon it appears. What I'm waiting on is a very important resistor to arrive for that set. I decided that we were going to replace that valve, that pen 45DD, and I also had to replace R16 as a fellow on the anti radio form recommended to me. So the problem was I didn't have a 1200K 3 watt resistor. So I had to order it from China and well that can take anything from 3 to 5 weeks to arrive, which is crazy, but it's something I need to wait for. Um, so there's a chance that it may not happen for another few weeks, there's a chance it could arrive next week. Um, whatever happens, maybe it will arrive at the end of the week, I honestly can't say. It has been 2 weeks already, so 2-3 weeks already, so it should be, shouldn't be too much longer. Now moving back to the Marconi, we've done a lot more work, again. We have completely recapped the set now. And it went really smoothly, I didn't have any issues. Uh, I'm actually pretty proud with how it came out because we all decided that we were going to keep that original can underneath, which I'll tell you a little more about when we go onto the chassis. If all of a sudden you think, my god, it's bright under there, it's because I just had to turn on my lamp because, you know, when I first began to film this, I noticed that it was just pitch black under there. The lighting in this room isn't very good. But the only things I could see was the yellow capacitors in the camera. They stick out, you know, it's almost like they're luminous in the dark. And it just made me realise how bright those things really are to the originals. Obviously we have all our components and they're aged and... They're getting to the point when they're starting to look older, but my god, those things are bright. <laughs> anyway, you can see here that the can has been restuffed. I asked you, well, asked all the viewers, what we wanted to do with this, and it was pretty much instantly made clear we were going to keep it because it was a repair which was perhaps within the first 10 years of the radio's life. In fact, I can almost guarantee it is. Now we can see that I've restuffed it. Now, originally it contained two 8 microfarad capacitors. And obviously the repairer, repairer put the first intended one to where it was supposed to go, being here. And then he just hooked the other one on to a, a grounding tab and sat it there. I don't like that. It wasn't how the radio was supposed to be originally. So I just put one back in, in order to, so that the radio is how it was originally supposed to be. You'll remember that we just removed the 8 from the can on top, put it in here, left the 4s in here, and then there's one more electrolytic which I'll show you in a moment. So that took care of that. It's actually just been completely, the inside was removed, it was just a giant wax block with tar containing the capacitors, I removed that. And believe it or not, I found this box is made of a very flimsy material called cardboard. At first I actually thought it was metal, and it was because the inside of it was solid, and when you tapped it, you know, it sounded like metal. It even felt like metal. It had such a strong lacquer finish on the top to protect the cardboard. So, as soon as I found that, I had to give it a coat of something, so I just gave it a coat of clear varnish to toughen it up again, because when I removed the the wax block, it was very flimsy. What I put in place of the wax block was a cylinder, well, not a cylinder, but a chunk of wood which I removed a cylinder from. And I then sunk the uh, 8 megafarad capacitor in there, wired it, and that done the job. So it's solid because there's wood in there. And uh, obviously the capacitor just sits in that block of wood. 
It only took me a moment, I just had to bore the hole out, sit the cap in and, and it worked, wired it up. I also, instead of sealing the box permanently, I just put a length of tape along the back so that should anyone ever wish to open this again, you undo the tape, break a bit of the finish, lacquer finish off, lift it up, put the new cap in. And that, that allows this to stay for even longer. It will be a while before it needs replaced, but I don't know who will get this radio after I have it. We also, you can see the brand new wires coming out of the can. That was completely restuffed. Uh, I didn't cut any corners with that one. You know, I, I did think about just disconnecting it and leaving it, but then I decided, you know, I, it, for all the time it's going to take me, I can just do that. I, I have the equipment to remove the innards of it and put some new ones in. Uh, and it gives me a lot more room, originally, as it would have had. So, it would, And it, it shows a bit of pride in your work when you do things like that. So, I'm happy with how that's come out. Now obviously we've just replaced every single wax capacitor with these yellow ones. Sometimes you feel sad about putting those in and you think, oh, should I restuff those caps? And I was asked if I was going to restuff the caps. And to be honest with you, I, I don't think that would, it was a good idea because the caps weren't branded. You know, they certainly weren't Marconi branded. They were a range of caps. Um, perhaps some had, had been replaced in the start of the radio's life, but it, it just wasn't worth it. You know, it's, you want these things to be safe. It's often you have to sacrifice a little bit of originality to use a radio. Uh, people say that you're removing the originality, well, what's more original, a radio that doesn't work or a radio that does work, you know? Uh, and also, I'm pretty sure I stated that originally you remember those capacitors here in the exact same positions. However, he had long lengths of wire going right next to a terminal strip and resistor. I didn't want those to short out. So I said I wanted to insulate the wires, and I have. You know, I, I don't understand why, in the first place, that was kept like that. You can see these wires here. These actually aren't wires, believe it or not. They're just supports. <laughs> That's actually how they've done it. That was a support to support all of this stuff on. They just kind of connected it all here. Uh, it's not been tampered with. It's factory. You can always tell because you can see almost where they used flux. And sometimes they dyed the areas so that you could tell if they'd been tampered with, but it's almost just the old flux. So we've done all those. There's one of the dog bones. That tests really good. I also insulated up. Basically, I insulated all the wires which were close to the chassis and that were close to things like this. There was a couple here. You can see there's one there which I didn't do because it's out of the way of everything. Plus, I always say that if you've got less than half an inch of wire, you know, a quarter inch or half an inch, you can get away without putting it on. This was at least an inch either side and it just had to be done. It shows yet again that you take pride in your work. And if someone looks under it, it doesn't look a mess. You know, you, you want to make the, the man in the future who maybe sorts this radio understand it and put everything back in its original places. You know, I uh, positioned all these the exact same way I took them out. You get people, you know, they change the shape and stuff. I want people to look at the original schematic and still recognize all of these capacitors under here. And I think uh, we've accomplished that. One last thing just before we wrap up the video. I forgot to mention that this set is bringing up a bit of bother for me because I'm unable to find one of the valves for the set. Now we found the, uh, the Magic Eye Tuner which was a Y63 valve and we found that without difficulty. However, the valve that I'm now looking for because all tests as well but it is a KT42. This is a valve that I require. Now it has a sensible equivalent. I think originally this valve was an N42 but I think the KT42 was uh, the I think that was introduced in 1937 so the year this set came out. So it put that valve out. 
However, this is very scarce too because there was a Marconi valve re later released which was only a 5 pin valve and it used a spriggan. But these old sets do not use a spriggan. For those of you who don't know what a spriggan is, it's a locating key for the tube base which ensures all the pins line up with the base as they're intended. But however, many years ago, they didn't have that. The pins were in a Pacific, you know, they were in a Pacific pattern and they only fit, fitted one way. They started just doing the, the circular type, so they had to put the locating key in the centre to locate all the pins. I'm looking for a KT42, which is a 7 pin valve. Uh, I think they call it B7 pin bases it uses, are the type that when they go in they almost squish in and get a better contact with the base. Uh, I, I may still find one, uh, something I'm still looking for. I'm going to contact another valve supplier which was recommended to me on the antique radio forum. However, if anyone out there does have one, I would greatly appreciate it if you could perhaps PM me and let me know uh, because it's only going to make this restoration speed up even more and who knows we may get to see the Ultra Electric and the Marconi playing very close together. Uh, the Ultra Electric will be finished next time but it'd be nice to get this one finished because the next project I have in mind is going to be a proper restoration that we go through everything in great detail because I noticed that in the Ultra Electric I kind of done a lot off camera. Well, this radio that I've got sitting in the back for the next restoration is going to be really good. I'm not going to mention it yet, something we can look forward to. I'm looking forward to starting on it too. So just again, if anyone has a KT42, uh, I think it is just a Marconi valve, 7 pin base, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could let me know.